KIMT, Iowa, Minnesota. Together, this is KIMT News 3 at 6. Here's a look at our Clear Lake live eye in the sky. At this hour, it appears that our blizzard conditions might be starting to improve. Whipping snow and cold temperatures, an Arctic cold front packs a brisk dose of wind and snow. And that created blizzard conditions around our area. Anyone out traveling in it knows it's impossible to drive. Here's a look at my trip into work. It's hard for me to even tell where I was today. From rural roads to the interstate and finally to County Road B20. Definitely a mess out there today. Now, let's check in and see if those conditions are getting better tonight. Yeah, let's check in with Adam right now. Chief Meteorologist Adam Frederick is in the Storm Team 3 Storm Center. Adam? Well, Dave and Jamie, some places are better now than they were, say, three hours ago, but that doesn't mean that conditions are very good. When we check out what's happening on our radar right now, on our Storm Team 3 Storm Tracker, you can see, actually taking a look first at our weather graphic system, we will see that there is a blizzard warning in effect that just came to an end for Albert Lee Mason City and off to the west. That just expired, actually will expire in about 30 seconds here. And then there is going to be another one, a uh, blizzard warning off to the east of I-35 and winter storm warning that goes for until about midnight for tonight. If we can take a look at our Storm Team 3 storm tracker right now. We are seeing that snow coming to an end across North Iowa and Southern Minnesota. Still a little bit of light snow out towards the Cresco and Riceville area. In fact, when the principals in Riceville just called me, they're being two hours late for tomorrow morning. You will see those in that information running across the bottom of your screen. Our Storm Team 3 live site shows some of the peak gusts around the region. Thompson hit a 56 mile per hour wind gust, so definitely it is very chilly outside. Now we do have meteorologist Jim Politas outside in the cold. Jim, tell us what it feels like and how the snow is doing out there tonight. Oh, it feels absolutely horrible out here. I'm looking forward to getting back in the studio. And to be quite honest with you, I think my nostrils are freezing. So keep in mind, if you do go out tonight, it is very cold. A frostbite can occur in as little as 10 minutes. So I'm looking forward to getting back in as soon as possible. As you take a look outside at our visibilities at this point, you can see they are starting to improve across the region from the west to the east. So that is definitely good news. But the feel like temperatures out here are very, very cold. And we're gonna try a little experiment here because we are scientists, so we're going to try this. We don't know if it'll work or not, but we're going to take this glass of water and put it on the ground and see if it freezes by the end of the show. So we'll be back on that, and uh, hopefully can get my nose to start to thaw. Well, we hope that your nose won't freeze, and maybe the water will. We'll see what it's like by the end of the show. Thanks a lot, Jim. And for now, Dave and Jamie, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Adam. While the blizzard conditions are affecting people all across the viewing area, here's a look at Interstate 35 earlier. We're right near the Iowa-Minnesota border. Our reporters saw several multi-vehicle crashes. Poor visibility brought traffic to a crawl. For the most part, travel not advised across the area. Here in Forest City, a break from the whiteout conditions, a fence, one of the only calm spots. Much the same at this nearly deserted Pronto gas station in Fertile. We couldn't find many people out and about. And that's a good thing, as conditions were brutal. Many drivers are searching for shelter tonight. And KIMT News 3's Colleen O'Shaughnessy is live outdoors. Colleen, how is this weather affecting travel plans tonight? Well, you can see it's a little bit better out here, but earlier blowing snow forced many drivers off the roads and into hotels. I spoke with several hotel managers in the area, and they say that the rooms are filling up fast, but they still have a few available. And for the, with the strong winds out here, it's obvious that that is going to be good news for a lot of drivers. Libby Hahn from the Best Western over in Clear Lake says the room started filling up at 11 this morning. Drivers say the blowing snow created near whiteout conditions both on Interstate 35 and Highway 18, forcing them to pull over. One traveler I spoke with says his work called and told him to get a room. They called us and let us know that the highways were actually closing in front of us and let us know to you know, pull off. You know, don't keep going if you don't have to. The storm and the added guests came as a shock to the director of sales, Libby Horn. I don't really check the weather, so this is all a surprise to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Horn says it's not just drivers staying over tonight. A few employees not ready to brave the roads have checked in, and several people who came to meetings at the Best Western today were forced to change their plans. Now, a couple of drivers I spoke with say they're safe, and they're actually looking forward to spending the day with a sort of grown-up snow day. And they're ready to hit the roads first thing tomorrow morning. Thank you so much, Colleen. Glad to hear that they're safe. And the Best Western in Clear Lake is fully booked this evening, but other hotels still have vacancies. And Libby Hahn says she still plans to take on the roads and drive home this evening. 
Travel isn't recommended tonight. Both Iowa and Minnesota Department of Transportation websites warn of dangerous conditions. To check out all that information yourself, we put those website links on KIMT.com. You see them right there. And you can also go get road information on your phone for either Iowa or Minnesota. Just dial 511. Well, some may be stranded in hotels, but a majority of you are stranded in your homes, and that means many are turning up the heat. More heat means higher heating bills. KIMT News 3's Brianna Denny is in Studio 3 with how some are fighting the rising costs. Brianna? Thanks, Jamie. Some say the remedy to lowering the staggering cost of heating is to be more efficient. Alliant Energy tells us that last month its customers paid more than $160 on the average. That's up ne nearly 40% from last year. Mason City's YMCA is trying to keep those costs down by using an unconventional method. They use ge germ geothermal energy to both heat and cool their building. It runs off the water from the ground. The YMCA says it's not looking to cut costs, but to keep them consistent. Costs, so we're not seeing those huge increases. We're using our energy more efficiently, so we don't see those big spikes when, when the costs go up. I also talked with one guy who has germal geothermal energy in his home. He says he's had it for more than 20 years and it saved him quite a bit of money. Jamie? All right, thanks, Brianna. The new Cerro Gordo County Law Enforcement Center also uses geothermal energy. Sheriff Kevin Pals tells us he expects to save several thousand dollars a year in both heating and cooling costs. The local blizzard conditions leave some travelers in Minnesota out in the cold. When the state patrol closed the interstate, some drivers had to find a place to stay. KIMT News 3's Renee Standera joins us from Albert Lee with details. Renee? Dave, the Salvation Army and American Red Cross in southern Minnesota have been on standby all day. The Salvation Army opened its shelter in Albert Lee for stranded travelers. We've just been notified that Austin is in a 72-hour snow emergency. That's the update. Some people found a warm place at the truck stop and hotels in Albert Lee. These are shots from the Albert Lee Inn this afternoon where the rooms were filling up fast. Ambulances were bringing people who were involved in accidents into the hotel. Schools in Austin and Albert Lee closed early today. There was some concern that district buses wouldn't be able to get rural kids to their homes, but administrators do say everyone got home okay. Dave, the Freeborn County Sh Sheriff Mark Herrig tells me the county snowplows are off the road and he doesn't expect them to go out until tomorrow morning. Good information. Thank you very much, Renee. And be sure to keep it here on KIMT News 3. We'll have the latest storm coverage. That includes road conditions available on our website, along with other important phone numbers. We'll continue to bring you any work and school closings along the bottom of your screen. And, of course, the latest Storm Team 3 forecast. The final meeting to decide on a whole grade sharing agreement is put on hold. The Titanka School Board had a meeting scheduled for tonight to accept students from Woden Crystal Lake. Bad weather is to blame for the cancellation. We know more tonight about the woman found dead in her apartment Monday morning. 35-year-old Stacy Renee Acker was found in the bedroom of her Stewartville apartment. Investigators say there are no signs of obvious trauma on her body, but the death is still being called suspicious. I'll wait till the final determination comes out from Dr. Pfeiffer in the coroner's office on the preliminary indication of her death. Like I said, it's still ongoing. And that's something that could be uh, critical for us if there is something more here than what we're seeing. The Olmstead County Coroner says he is waiting on toxicology reports to determine the cause of death. He says that could take a couple of weeks. We have more details tonight about a deadly mobile home fire. Those with the Clear Lake Fire Department say it appears a cigarette caused a couch to catch fire. It happened in the 2400 block of South Shore Drive last evening. Keely Boss died in that fire. Early autopsy results show she died from breathing too much smoke. A local police department is joining a national trend when it comes to firearms. The Albert Lee Police Department is issuing assault rifles for each of their officers. The rifles will go in the trunk of each patrol cruiser. Firearms instructor Rod Davis says some drug dealers carry serious firepower. The rifles will keep officers safe. He says the new weapons will also improve their range. We had a bank robbery and the officers were being shot at with the rifle and they could not get close enough with the weapons that they had. The Mason City, Rochester and Austin Police Departments already have automatic weapons. After months of speculation, it appears the Twins are going to deal pitcher Johan Santana. Minnesota is agreeing to send the two-time Cy Young winner to the New York Mets. New York will send four prospects our way. However, the deal could still fall through. Sports director Eric Lind will have more a little later on. 
A story of a miraculous ice rescue is getting national attention tonight. Still to come, we'll talk with the surgeon that helped bring a man back to life many years ago. And coming up tonight at 10, we'll tell you what you need to know when it comes to this weather and your work and school week ahead. Plus, find out about an illness at the governor's mansion in Des Moines. And covering your health has a new way you can actually help replace your own painful knee. You're watching KIMD News 3 at 6. News with Dave Hansen and Jamie Copley. Chief Meteorologist Adam Frederick with your Storm Team 3 weather. And sports with Eric Lind. KIMD News 3. Coverage you can count on. When the weather takes a turn for the worst, you can count on KIMT Storm Team 3. Watch the bottom of your screen or go to KIMT.com for the latest on school business and event closings and delays. Brought to you by Clear Lake Bank and Trust and KIMT News 3. KIMT and our Giving Your Best Partners, Audubel Hearing Centers, Carlos O'Kelly's, and First Citizens National Bank. We'd like to congratulate Bill Fleur as our January Giving Your Best Award winner. Bill takes elderly people to town for doctor appointments, has worked with boys for over 20 years through Just Friends, and is always willing to help anyone that needs it. If you know someone who gives back as a volunteer, please write to us or log on to KIMT.com and click on Giving Your Best. Get the day's top health headlines in covering your health weeknights at 5 and 10 on KIMT News 3. A look at our Clear Lake Live Eye in the Sky. Quieter conditions tonight after a blizzard blows through our area. The story of a man who nearly drowned in that lake is still making headlines. Nearly 15 years after doctors brought him back to life, Ward Krenz now lives in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He was snowmobiling when he fell through the ice. Dr. Daniel Waters and his team worked to bring Krenz back to life after he was clinically dead for more than two hours. Waters gave him a one in a hundred chance of living. Everything that had to happen to get a perfect result happened. Uh, it, so many small coincidences, so many things that just had to be in the right place at the right time. And tonight, National Geographic is featuring the story in a documentary called I Came Back from the Dead. Waters has also been on Fox and ABC's 2020 talking about what happened. Well, National Geographic has good things to say about an area company as well. Winnebago Industries is about to celebrate 50 years in business. John K. Hansen founded the Forest City Company back in 1958. It started as a travel trailer factory. In 1966, the first Winnebago RV rolled off the assembly line. National Geographic says Winnebago is the largest RV production facility in the world and is also the leading motorhome manufacturer in America. It's going to be a chilly and windy night ahead of us, but don't worry, some warmer weather is coming. I'll tell you when next in your Storm Team 3 forecast. Brought to you by Treasure Island Resort and Casino. The Iowa Hospital Association, we care about Iowa's health. Want to know more about a story we reported on? Visit links we mentioned at KIMT.com. Currently around the region, we are seeing the skies clearing out just a little bit. Storm Tracker shows that it's drying off out to the west of I-35. To the east, we're seeing a few of those light snow showers continuing from Rochester back down through Riceville. Now, we do have a large uh, number of schools that are already late started for tomorrow. We're going to be running those across the bottom of the screen, and then we'll probably be taking them out about 6.30 since we're not getting many more in, but we will be running them again tonight at 10 o'clock. We'll also have them on KIMT.com. Of course, if things change, we will be running them as needed. When we take a look at what's happening outside on our Storm 3 Live site, some of the feels like temperature, your wind chills around the area range from about 34 degrees below zero in Rochester to about 31 below zero in Forest City. Now with our Storm 3 Lives, these are live conditions from your hometown area. And the thing is, is that these numbers update every two seconds with live information coming from those schools. Taking a look at what's happening outside on our Clear Lake Live Eye in the Sky. Look at that, a little bit of clearing of the skies out to the west. Now, if you look closely, you see a little bit of haze there, at least in the foreground that's the blowing of the snow around the area we are going to be seeing our skies clearing out for tonight and with that temperatures are really going to be dropping check out some of these temperatures right now already eight degrees below zero in albert lee six below for austin preston rochester four below for mason city still sitting at zero for decor and charles city think back just 24 hours ago 45 degrees colder than now than it was 24 hours ago for rochester dodge center owatonna and albert lee Mason City, Charles City, 41 degrees colder. Now, some of that, or the majority of that temperature drop occurred in just 12 hours from midnight to noon. 
Now around the region right now, already 15 below in International Falls and Fargo 14 below. So we are definitely going to be seeing dangerously cold wind chills out there. And be aware of that. While the snow may be coming to an end, it still is going to be blowing around. And if you do get into an accident, you are going to have another concern. And that is going to be that dangerously cold temperatures. Satellite radar shows that that snow is making its way off to the east. So that is going to be coming to an end, clearing skies out to the west. And we are going to be seeing lots more clearing here as we go into the overnight hours. That's because an area of high pressure will be sliding through the region. But the thing is, is it's not going to be lasting for very long as we are going to be seeing our temperatures uh, starting to raise just a little bit late in the day. But then we'll see more clouds and ultimately another small chance for a few light snow showers. Here's your Storm Team 3 forecast in detail. Becoming partly cloudy tonight. Temperatures dropping down anywhere from about 6 to 14 degrees below zero. Northwest wind still blowing that snow around, but the good news is that they'll continue to slowly diminish, probably down to about 10 miles per hour or so by 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then after a partly cloudy start, skies will become mostly cloudy tomorrow. Highs in the middle single digits, but at least we'll be warming things up above zero. Seeing those extra clouds late in the day, mostly cloudy for tomorrow night. Lows really not dropping off very far. Easterly winds 5 to 8 miles per hour. In your Friday weather forecast, a little bit of snow across parts of northern Iowa, the southern portion of our viewing area, and then the exact opposite will be true on Saturday. Across southern Minnesota is what it looks like, but at least temperatures will be warming back up into the upper 20s. So gone with the wind chill and also gone with those blizzard-like conditions. Boy, do we deserve that. It'll be nice. All right, thanks, Adam. It didn't take long for the Twins to settle on a deal for their ace. Nope, Eric Lind is in next with more on the Johan Santana trade and the rest of the sports news. a story? Read it in its entirety on KIMT.com. Yes, it appears to be true. Johan Santana fans will have to be looking for Mets jerseys next season. After many rumors of deals, the Twins look to be sending the two-time Cy Young winner to the Big Apple. Twins will get four prospects from the Mets. Outfielder Carlos Gomez and pitchers, pitchers Phil Humber, Dallas Guerra, and Kevin Mulvey. However, according to the USA Today, the next 48 to 72 hours will be crucial to finishing the deal. Santana must pass a, fa a physical and even more important will be whether or not the Mets can come, up, come to an agreement on a contract extension. Johan is seeking at least a five-year deal worth $20 million or more per season. Here's a look at some of the notable events in Santana's career with the Twins. He was acquired from Florida way back in 1999, making his debut in 2000. He landed on the scene in 04 with that 14-game win streak and his first of two Cy Youngs. He also was an All-Star three times over from 2005 to 2007. This past year, he struck out a career-high 17 in a single game. We'll have more on Johan, Johan and how his numbers compare all-time in team history tonight at 10. Nearly all schools canceled classes. Most let their kids out early. That put a damper on all after-school activities and our sports overtime show. The bone-chilling weather that Adam and company have been talking about is a hassle for our sports coverage. More importantly, a hassle for athletic directors who try to reschedule all the games. This is at least the second time this year where games have been had to be rescheduled for most schools. Mason City High School AD Bob Kenny is in his first year and in charge of scheduling issues. He says it's getting tougher as the postseason approaches. You know, you'd want to be playing games the day before you're going to go to your regional playoff game or, you know, whatever it is. You know, there's certain parts of the season when you get close to the end that there's just no place to put it. The Mohawk Hoops games with Lincoln are rescheduled for Monday night. The Blizzards are cutting out sports overtime tonight, but hopefully things will clear up by Friday. While you're snowed in, head to KIMT.com and vote for the Spotlight Game of the Week. The Forest City boys just landed the top spot in 3A and will get to defend it against rival Lake Mills. If you think the girls' games are better, choose the 6th-ranked Green Devils hosting West Hancock or 14th-ranked Algona at Clear Lake. 
Balloting closes Thursday night after the 10 o'clock news. Osage native Mark Schwab is stepping down as head wrestling coach at Buena Vista at the end of the season. Schwab is in his fourth year at Buena Vista. Schwab's a four-time state high school wrestling champion and a two-time All-American at UNI. While the UNI basketball team gets the night off, the Cyclones are back on the court against Colorado. Iowa State has ran into tough times lately, losing their last two to Kansas and Kansas State. Tonight should change ISU's fortune. Colorado has just one win in conference play. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. It might be too little too late for this season, but the Timberwolves can get their fourth win in their last five tries when they play in Chicago tonight. Game time in the Windy City set for 7.30. Hey, the Timberwolves are starting to look better. Bit by bit. Yeah. Thanks so much, Eric. We'll be right back. For weather conditions 24 hours a day, seven days a week, visit KIMT.com. During the school year, KIMT honors an area educator that has made a difference. To nominate a teacher that has made an impact on your life, go to KIMT.com and click on the Golden Apple Award. Brought to you by NIAC, E85, and Heartland Power Cooperative. Experience the difference of the Furniture Mattress Outlet Store. As a full-service furniture store, we meet all your needs. Shop in a relaxed, easygoing atmosphere with our highly trained sales staff. The best quality at the lowest prices at the Furniture Mattress Outlet. Just one block north of Shopco on Monroe. Oh, thanks, oh, Mom. Okay. <laughs> okay. The power of pizza in a bite-sized snack. Totino's Pizza Rolls. Pop-Tarts can't stand up to the delicious taste of toaster strudel. Pillsbury Toaster Strudel, the one kids want to eat. On the next, everybody loves Raymond. Deborah's mother has a day. Following KIMT News 3 at 6. So, hey, I think that went really well. They hated me. I was all wrong. No. No, 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 no. Yes, they said, we hate you, you're all wrong. Listen, this is Hollywood. They're just playing mind games with you. You got that part. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I want to take my favorite client out for a nice, expensive lunch. How about that? Really? Yeah, I want to, but my credit cards are all screwed up. Listen, you pay, and we'll take it out of my commission when you book this job. Huh? Let's go to Spago. Then. The big story of this day, the blizzard. Let's check in with Adam and Jim, who are outdoors with their science experiment of sorts. Hey, guys. Yes, you're very right. Early on, we did try a science experiment. We put water in a glass. Now let's see if it actually froze in the time that we had the show. So, Adam? OK, this is how we're going to test it out. OK, Jim, are you ready? Think it's frozen? I hope so. Yeah, so as you can see, in just a period of about 30 minutes, the water, glass of this water has frozen solid here. It gives you any idea. Your skin can freeze pretty quickly as well. So this can freeze in a half hour. Your skin can freeze in a half hour. So we're going to head inside after this. So. Yeah, and as the night goes on, only about 10 minutes for your skin to freeze. All right, thanks so much, guys. A very interesting science experiment, and I'm just glad I wasn't the one that was out there doing it, because what if? <laughs> it's a good thing it's cold, right? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> very, very scary. So if you do have to head out tonight, obviously, bundle up. Well, no games, safe. and I'm... I'm kind of glad that we don't have to hit the roads either, but uh, but they'll be making them up in the next couple of days, kind of forced to. Yeah. All right. Plenty of stuff for you to yes. cover, that's yes. for sure. All right, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We'll be sure to have the very latest on today's weather tonight at 10. Good night. Uh, Phil? Yeah? Your expense report.